Hi everyone, it's Mr. H here and welcome to this lesson on shortest distance to a line. Today we're trying to find the shortest distance from a point to a line. And we're going to do that using slopes and distances. And so I've kept one important term here for us to remember and that's an altitude. An altitude is a line that passes through a vertex of a triangle at 90 degrees to the opposite side. And so let's see at the end of this how the altitude compares to the shortest distance to a line. We have all these helpful equations at our disposal. We have y equals mx plus b, we have the slope equation, we have the midpoint formula, and we have the distance of a line segment formula. And so with all of these in mind, let's go ahead and make a plan for how to find the shortest distance from this point A to the line segment BC, where B is this coordinate and this coordinate. So if I graph these points, A is 6, 1.5, so it's right there, there's A. And I'm also going to graph B, 2, 8.5, so always x first, then the y. So 2 and 8.5 is right there, that's B. And then C is going to be at 10, 4.5. Right there. And so if all those are together like that, then we draw the line segment from B to C, and we talk about the shortest distance here. So I've drawn that line segment from B to C, and so you might think, okay, well, what line is the shortest distance? Well, is it this line that goes from here down to here? Is it the line that goes from here down to here? Is it the line that goes from here down to here? What what line is actually going to be the shortest? And when you just think about that logically, hopefully you conclude that it has to be the line that intersects this other line at 90 degrees. So the line that intersects this other one at 90 degrees is going to be the shortest length of line. Well, let's go ahead now with that in mind and make a plan for finding the shortest distance. Remember this, I could find if I knew. I could find if I knew, and we're going to work backwards through these steps for how to solve this. So I could find the distance, we'll label this point D, we haven't found that point specifically, but it's somewhere around there. So I could find the distance or the length um, from A to D, so we'll call it distance AD, if I knew what? Well, I have to know the point D. Well, how do I know the point D? Well, I know the point D if I knew the point of intersection of those two lines, of the line segment AD and BC. Well, how do we find the point of intersection of those two lines? We find the point of intersection of those two lines, POI of those lines, if I know what? Well, if I know the equations of both lines. Well, how do you know the equation of each of those lines? Well, let's start by taking, talking about the equation of line uh, BC. I know the equation of line BC if I knew point B and point C. What I would do is I would use the slope, and then once I found the slope, I would go ahead and I would find the, uh, I would sub the slope and a point to find the y-intercept. That's how we've always found uh, the equation of a line given two points. Well, how would I find the equation of AD? Well, I would find the equation of AD if I knew point A and D. Well, we're trying to find point D later on. So there's a couple things we know. We know point A and the slope of the line AD must be the negative reciprocal of BC. Because it's perpendicular to it, right? That's a right angle right there. So that has to be the negative reciprocal slope. of the slope of BC. And we can go up here and we can just label this is the slope BC up there for point BC. So now what we want to do is make a plan of attack working backwards through these because if I knew ends at the starting point and I could find this very, this is the ending point here where we're trying to find the distance. So what's the first thing we could do here? Well we could, the first thing we could do is find the equation of BC. Notice that the equation of AD relies on the slope of BC. So that would be the second step. 
the third step would involve us then with the equation of each of those lines finding the point of intersection. And we can do that, I should note this, we could do this by substitution. Once I have the point of intersection, then I can find point D. That is point D. All right, that's important. This is that. And so once I have point D, which is the point of intersection, I can then find the distance AD. So that's my plan of attack. So I'll carry out those steps. Now, I hope you followed me through these and you actually thought through them yourself. And if you haven't quite made connections, make some connections as we do these. Because it's important that you don't just follow a step-by-step -step guide for how to do this, but you actually think it out and plan it out yourself. So this would be a good time to actually stop the video and see if you can carry out this plan yourself before you just follow blindly step-by-step. -step. The most important thing about thinking mathematically is not following steps. It's about making a plan and trying to logically think through something. So the first thing we want to do is find the equation of BC. The equation of BC is first found, as we noted, by finding the slope of BC. Well, what is the slope? Well, the slope is always y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which you should get, be getting comfortable using again because it was part of yesterday's lesson. And keep in mind this, the point B has coordinates 2, 8.5, and point A, point C, has port, coordinates of 10, 4.5. And so uh, the y's are the, second, are, are the second coordinate part, and the x is the first coordinate part. So I'm going to say, in this case, it's 4.5 minus 8.5. And then it's going to be on the bottom 10 minus 2. So I'm going to get negative 4 over 8, which is negative 1 half. So some of you might be thinking ahead and say, well, I know what the negative reciprocal of that is for the other line. And you'd be right, it, it would be 2. But we'll get there in a minute. We also need... Now that we have the slope, the equation. And so I'm going to sub, uh, I'm going to choose 2 and 8.5. You could sub in point C, 10, and 4.5 as well. That would have worked. But I'm going to substitute that one in for x and y. And the slope equals negative 1 half into y equals mx plus b. That's going to give me the equation for that line. So that's going to give me y equals negative, uh, not y equals. I'm going to get rid of the y. And in its place, I'm going to put 8.5 equals negative one-half times two plus b. I'm solving for that y-intercept. That's what the b value is, the y-intercept. Don't forget that. So negative one-half times two gives me negative one. And then if I add one to both sides, that gives me a value of 9.5. So that means this equation is y equals negative one-half or negative 0.5x plus 9.5. There's my first equation for the line BC. And you've noticed I'm just doing a lot of labeling things because it's easy to mix things up. So don't mix things up by mislabeling things or not labeling things at all. So now the second step involves us going ahead and actually finding uh, the equation for AD. So the equation for AD. Even though I don't know what the point D is, I can find that because I know the slope of AD is positive 2. As we said, it's the negative reciprocal of the slope of BC, which we knew was negative a half. So that's the first thing. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to sub the slope equals 2, and we're going to sub in the point that's on the line, that point A right there, and A6, 1.5. So this is the X, this is the Y, into Y equals MX plus B. And we're going to do the exact same thing we just did in step 1. And hopefully you can follow along as I go through this pretty quickly now. So the slope is 2, the y value is 1.5, and the x value is 6. And as you see what I get in this case is 12. When I subtract 12 from both sides, I get a value of negative 10.5. And so that means y equals 2x minus 10.5 is my equation for AD. Which brings me to point number three. Now you'll notice that I mentioned already that we have to find the point of intersection by substitution. You could use elimination. That would work. I would not recommend you necessarily do it graphically, though that could work as well, but graphically isn't always accurate. Accurate. So we're going to use substitution here. That's what I'm going to do. And so what we need to do is uh, 
because the first equation, y equals negative 0.5x plus 9.5, is going to be having the same x and y values as the second equation, y equals 2x minus 10.5, then what I can do is I can just set the uh, right side of each of those two equations equal to each other. So there's the first and second equations. Set them equal to each other gives me the following. And you notice there, in order to get like terms together, I'm going to do this all in one step. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, and that's going to cancel the 2x off the right. I'm going to subtract 9.5 from both sides. That's going to subtract it off the left. It's going to give me negative 2.5x is negative 20. Now, you might have gone ahead and brought them to the opposite side, so you didn't have to deal with the negative, but not a big deal. What we're going to get here is 8. So x equals 8. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sub that into either one of the equations because those should both give me the same y value because we're trying to find when the y value and x values are the same. So let's sub x equals 8 into, I'm going to choose the first equation. So I'm going to put y equals negative uh, 0.58 plus 9.5. And it works out to be a pretty nice number here. Works out to be y equals 5.5. So we have the point of intersection, 8 for 5.5. Now remember we said that that point of intersection is point D. So that fourth step we can do, and really quickly here, we can say D is 8 and 5.5. So there we go. We've got all those things. The last thing we have to do now is find the distance AD. So this last step, the distance AD, sometimes you could use a, a capital D with a small A and D in the corner. Uh, you could also use AD with a line over top of it. I'm going to use the AD with a line over top of it. We know that the length formula, the distance formula, is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. And it's very important that we write the general formula and that we write our givens as well because silly mistakes get made. In fact, when I was making this video, I made one and I had to go back and fix it. Um, so the A coordinates are 6 and 1.5. And the D coordinate is 8.5 and 5 point, or 8 and 5.5 rather. 8 and 5.5. And so x1, y1, x2, y2. And so when we sub those values in, uh, it works out pretty nicely here. Y2 or x2 is 8, x1 is 6, y2 is 5.5, y1 is 1.5, and then I get 2 all squared plus 4 all squared. If they had happened to be negative numbers under the square roots, that wouldn't have mattered because when you square it, you end up getting a positive anyway. So in this case, we get 4 plus 16, which is the square root of 20, which is approximately equal to 4.47. So the shortest distance to the line, we can conclude, therefore, the shortest distance to the line is 4.47 units. Stay with me now because I want to do a couple of things just to analyze what's going on here. So now you look at if you look at this graph again, you'll notice that the distance is from A to D. And just, just good to make a mental check. Does that actually seem to make sense? That that would be about 4.47. And just like if you count there, that's maybe uh, we're going on a bit of a diagonal there. But 1, 2, 3, 4, and a bit, 4.47 seems to make good sense there. The last thing I want to come back to is this idea of an altitude. An altitude, it says in the definition, is a line that goes from a vertex in a triangle and intersects the opposite side at 90 degrees. This line right here is the vertex, or is not the vertex, it's the altitude. It goes through this vertex of this triangle. Triangle ABC, this line right here is the altitude, the altitude of triangle ABC through A. Now note I could write an, I could draw an altitude from vertex B or an altitude from vertex C as well and it would be the same process. So there you go.